a drastic rise in high Arctic lightning has scientists worried. Now, the region's air typically does not suit strikes, so they've become an important climate crisis indicator. That's what they're claiming, that this is a climate crisis indicator, which would lead you to global warming narrative. Now, tonight we're going to actually talk about the truth about lightning, what we know causes lightning, and what we think is increasing lightning. Because, well, the panties are in a bunch with the scientists, and they're worried. Now, another sign that things are getting weird as well is increased lightning. And lightning around the North Pole has increased dramatically in 2021. But the uptick started in 2017. And by the end of this podcast, you'll know everything about why it's increasing, why we predicted it five years ago, and why you should worry. Now, an increase in lightning strikes is expected to ignite more wildfires. So that's the one thing we have to worry about. But that's the least of our worries. Did you know as early as... 1933, there was a connection between cosmic rays and lightning. It wasn't really until decades later that any real cosmic ray research was going on, thanks to the work of Frank Oppenheimer, which is where the, our channel gets its name. But the big question, even as early as 2008, is do cosmic rays cause lightning? Joseph Dwyer, a professor of physics and space science at the Florida Institute of Technology, has been wondering the same thing. And I think that the question in recent times has been answered. A year later, do cosmic rays grease lightning? Russian researchers find that with little tweaking of their model, lightning studies support the role of celestial particles in seeding lightning. Now, what they're suggesting here in 2013 May of 2013, is that cosmic rays seed lightning. <laughs> and ironically enough, the 1933 paper, there, where is it? There it is. The 1933 paper brought up the same idea. And it's, it's, it's quite uh, spectacularly described here in the abstract. Now, this is amazing to me because the 1933 paper is more readable than any paper today. In order to explain the curious behavior of lightning flashes, the possibility should be kept in mind of a connection between lightning discharges and cosmic rays. When penetrating particles from cosmic rays move through the atmosphere, in this case through electrically loaded clouds, they are ionizing the air, making conducting paths for the lightning. Now, the twisted or irregular shapes of lightning flashes may find a natural explanation. If we think of a discharge path following the variable network of ion tracks, such as are assumed to be present in the air at any moment caused by nuclear disintegration of atoms during the disintegration of these cosmic rays, well, then you get lightning. And that's what struck my fancy. So do cosmic rays cause lightning? Yes. As early as 1933, scientists we're positing it. And since then, cosmic rays have illuminated the electric fields that cause lightning. And this was coming out in a paper in 2015, where they were actually using the cosmic rays to see lightning. And then the mystery of gamma rays could help solve the old, the age-old lightning puzzle. Now, researchers in J Japan in 2021 were enlisting an army of citizens to explore how storms on Earth create extreme bursts of gamma radiation. Or is it the other way around? Extreme bursts of gamma radiation cause lightning outbreaks. Now, a paper in August of 2020 by Dr. Tony Phillips, Cosmic Rays and the Weakening Solar Cycle, attacked, it tackled this topic. And it made a direct connection between increasing cosmic rays and the decreasing intensity of the sun and the grand minima we're dumping into. And he did a spectacular job exposing the fact that during the next solar cycle, we could see cosmic ray dose rates increase as much as 75%. And that means lightning will follow. The paper they're basing this on is the July 23rd, 2020 paper here by multiple authors. Galactic cosmic radiation in the interplanetary space through a modern secular minimum. A modern secular minimum means the new grand solar minimum. It's just different terminology. 
It doesn't mean anything else. Now, it won't be specifically named a grand solar minimum until the end of the, the event, but while it's dropping off, while the solar cycles are dropping off, we have become in a secular minimum, meaning it's happening now. If it's a grand solar minimum, we won't know till the end, but we are dropping into a secular minimum now, and galactic cosmic radiation is increasing. In fact, we are at the new modern maximum, and we're about to get to that. In Utah, a team made, made, made a breakthrough in understanding rare lightning triggered gamma rays. Or is it the gamma rays triggering the rare lightning? Now, do cosmic ray air showers initiate lightning? I love this paper. It's a statistical analysis of cosmic ray air showers in lightning mapping array data. And what they conclude is that, well, cosmic ray air showers do, in fact, probably initiate lightning. It was first published in July 21st of 2017. And it's based on this graph. When we have an active sun, like here at the peak of solar cycle 23, we have very little cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are in black, sunspots are in red. When we have a solar minimum here, like the minimum between 23 and 24, we have a quiet sun and increased cosmic rays. And in fact, this minimum, we reached a cosmic ray maximum, the highest cosmic rays on Earth ever recorded in modern times. And guess what happens now in 2021? 2020, where we just came off the next minimum. Yes, we reached the next maximum. So here's the 2010 cosmic ray max. It dropped down and then came back up in 2020 to reach a higher max. And the prior max. And more Tony Phillips cosmic ray monitoring. This is from Ohulu, and this is just the recent last five years, an increase in 10% in Ohulu, Finland, in cosmic rays. If we come over to Tahoe here, the Tahoe region of California, 22% increase in cosmic rays in four years. And here we are over at Abisko, Sweden. 12% increase from 2017 to 2020. Now, with an increase in cosmic rays at high latitudes, a drastic rise in high Arctic lightning can easily be explained. And it's, it's not just drastic. It's right in your face. The solar minimum was 2016 and 2017. And we'll get to that graph and we'll bring it over here to look at it. Yeah, we'll put them side by side. So here you see 2016, 17, we're at the bottom here. 20, let's say 2013 to 2016 is the bottom. And you can see on here 2013 to 2016 is the bottom. And then for some reason, Arctic lightning starts ticking up. And it goes through the roof in 2020, increasing from zero in 2017 to almost 8,000 strikes in 2020. And that has everything to do, look at the density of the cosmic ray dose ray. So they're getting lots of strikes, lots of cosmic rays coming in, and we get lots more lightning. So what does that mean for you and I? It means we're at peak lightning right now, and it's gonna continue for decades. But it's gonna ebb and flow. So we're now at a decreased lightning. And then increased lightning. So at some point this will rise and fall, but it, it continues to go higher and higher each additional time. So you can see here, cycle 23, 22, 21, cycle 20. Each cycle has a higher cosmic ray count and then all of a sudden here, holy macaroni, we went into space. And if this increases 75% more, we could be seeing a counting rate off the chart here at 12 and 13 in the next cycle, which means in the next decade. So what does that mean for you and I? If lightning is increasing this fast in the Arctic, it will be increasing in lower latitudes as the cycle progresses, as the magnetosphere wanes, 
and as the booms increase, we're going to need a lightning helmet. Is there even such a thing? I hope so. I'm ready to strap mine on. As more and more cosmic rays pass through these ionized clouds, which we call storms, more and more lightning is produced. And this has been proven unequivocally in the Arctic. Are you picking up what we're putting down? I hope so. Because as early as 1933, we knew about this information and nothing was done. And now they're blaming it on global warming. Can you imagine how embarrassed I am as a scientist? And that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't shared this with like-minded people. And if you see lightning or hear thunder, stay indoors. Trust me. That's a boom. Be safe. We love you. No, no.